I'm Annika Goldman, the Chief Operating Officer at Canopy. I'm here to talk about how we can build a better internet, one that serves media companies, content creators, and consumers. Now, there are a lot of ways the internet can be improved, and I only have 10 minutes, so I'm going to focus on one. Today's internet compels people to turn over their personal data for the benefit of others. I like to think of this as the mission creep of the internet. Our capacity to innovate technically has led to amazing advances, but those technical leaps have not been met by a willingness to grapple with the social implications of what we've built. We've become accustomed to a world where we turn over our personal information in exchange for experiences and, and recommendations that don't reflect our true selves. The internet is making predictions about what we want, who we are, who we should meet, and who we'll become. In the process, we've become vulnerable. Our locations and activities are tracked and surveilled. Our children's personal information is collected and used in ways we don't know and don't understand. Political misinformation campaigns warp our perception of the world. Our most sensitive information, including health and financial data, can be hacked, leaked, even just shared without our knowledge and used against us. Government scrutiny of big tech continues to increase, and we can expect that tech and media companies will be in the regulatory crosshairs for years to come. For all of these reasons, we founded Canopy. The people behind Canopy have worked on some of the world's most popular personalization products, from Spotify's Discover Weekly to Instagram's Explore. And as we reflected on the work we've done and where we thought the world was going, we decided it was time for a change in how data is used for personalization. We all know the magic in connecting someone to something that they'll love, in leading them to a hidden, hidden gem, in creating moments of serendipity and delight. But we can reach for those moments while giving people back control of who they are and how they, how they are understood. We need to build systems that give people control of their personal data. Systems that enable us to create magical experiences, but don't require people to surrender their privacy and security in exchange. This is the kind of technology that we're building at Canopy. We're laying the foundation for a new way, one that protects people's privacy while enabling services to offer personalized experiences. In that way, you can continue to run your businesses. You can understand your audiences in the aggregate. You can connect people to the content that they'll love. You can show the right ads to the right people at the right time and pitch subscription products that meet people's needs and use cases, but all in a way that protects their privacy, that offers them security and control, that enables you to comply with regulations. We believe this is the start of a much needed change and how products and services are built for individuals, one that puts people at the center. So, how does it work? Imagine you are Peter Kafka. You have a unique mix of tastes and preferences, things that you love, and things that you don't admit that you love. In today's world, your personal data is sucked up by servers all over the place that are using it to create models of who you are, all just a little bit different. They use those models to predict what you like so that they can monetize it. And at first, this worked out okay. Peter, an article to read. Peter, this is a song that you'll love. Peter, here's a video to watch. Peter, it's Zappos, please. Just look at these really cute shoes. But in time, this deal got worse. Instead of just optimizing for your preferences, platforms started optimizing for their own objectives, for margin, for engagement, and they didn't give you or content creators a say. For the most part, the consequences of these choices went ignored. The risks of collecting all this personal data, the risks of unchecked algorithmic bias. We see these failures of this model all around us. So at Canopy, we built a new one. Using a combination of on-device machine learning and differential privacy, 
We keep your personal data on your devices in your hands. So instead of multiple models of Peter lingering out there on services for all time, there's one model, and it's in his control. He defines who he is and how he is understood. He has a say in what platforms and services can know about him, all anonymously. In the process, Peter and all of us get experiences and recommendations that are a better fit for our preferences and our interests, and our privacy is protected. Moreover, media companies, publishers, content providers, they're able to find the right audiences for their content. They know what people like and want without ever knowing who they are. They find the people who will come back again and again for what they love. At Canopy, we think this is the future. We think this is a model that protects people's privacy but enables services to provide personalized experiences. And for this model to thrive, we believe there are certain values we need to align on. First, private by default. You should own your data. You control your identity. Your data should never be used against you. Second, control. Protecting and securing personal data only gets you so far. You should remain in control of how that data is used. You should be able to change your settings, your personalization, your recommendations. You should even be able to delete your digital identity. Third, delightful discoveries. What are we optimizing for? Is getting somebody to click on the next thing really delivering them a delightful experience? At Canopy, we think deeply about this question. How do we deliver delight for our users? How are we facilitating journeys of exploration? How are we satisfying budding curiosities? Fourth, people and technology. Editorial principles and algorithmic approaches must work together. Algorithms cannot do it alone. We believe in investing in editorial standards, in not relying on post hoc moderation, and ensuring that diverse viewpoints and perspectives that meet those standards are well represented. Immediacy and endless feeds are internet, are internet norms, but they are not requirements. And if we challenge these ideas, we might be better prepared to combat misinformation and promote the spread of truthful content. At Canopy, we spent a lot of time thinking about these ideas and saying, how can we get our values and our technology in the hands of real people? In the process, it became clear to us that today's internet is optimized for immediacy and engagement. It's great at breaking news, hot takes, outrage. And while that is occasionally exactly what we are looking for, it has some downsides. It can leave you feeling lousy. It's your, your exclusive content diet. If it's not exactly the type of content you make, it's hard to be discovered. And it can trap you in filter bubbles and stereotypes that narrow your world instead of broadening it. For example, when my son was born a few years ago, my internet experience changed overnight. Suddenly, it was entirely ads of fancy cribs that would gently soothe him to sleep, guaranteed, and articles and videos about all of the detailed milestones I needed to track to ensure that he would be a success in life. And there was no way I could say, that's enough, please, something else. So at Canopy, we've thought a lot about this, and we thought, how do we challenge the status quo? And so we've built our own app, which we consider to be a test bed for our private personalization technology and a way to get this in the hands of real people. It's called Tonic. It's a selection of daily personalized reads, and it learns more about you the more you use it. Some of what's unique about Tonic is what's not there. When you, when you download the app, we don't ask you for an email address, a login, a phone number, or to create an account. We don't need or want that information. We spend most of our time thinking about how we can give you control over your personalization experiences in ways that are fun and playful. All personalization products work by making inferences about your behavior. We've all had ads and videos follow us around the internet for months and months without being able to stop it. So what we do in Tonic is we give you access to your entire history as well as the inferences we've made about that, and we allow you to change it. So if you read something and want to pretend that never happened, you can do that very easily. Or if you read something and you were like, I love this, and you got it wrong, you can do that too. We also make it super easy to swap out a pic so you can explore the universe. 
We try and make sure your experience is diverse and wide ranging so that your world expands instead of narrows. Tonic is just a start. We want to work with other companies to change the value exchange of the internet. We are not alone. Companies are hard at work creating private experiences in email, messaging, search, and other utilities. The world's bigger, biggest internet platforms are publicly grappling with what privacy means to their brands. Their narratives differ, but it's clear we are on the cusp of something new. I believe that the internet of the future looks very different than the internet of today. Imagine a world where your digital identity is stored on your device so that when you download the next streaming app, it knows exactly what you want to watch on day one. Or you're a podcast creator and you're trying to figure out what to build next. Imagine a world where your listeners have so much trust in their privacy and security that they're more willing to reveal their preferences to you, enabling you to make better and more accurate predictions. Or imagine showing up in a new city and getting personalized, restaurant, shopping, museum recommendations, and your location is not being tracked or surveilled on a server. This is the future that we want to build, and we hope you'll come along with us. Thank you.